Welcome back to another deck profile. I'm Richard and today we're bringing back Aggravane, which I think might be the best Paladin deck in the format. Now I know what you're probably thinking. It's most likely Luard, but I say you're wrong. <laughs> so Knight of Fury Aggravane is better now thanks to Hill Guardians. And I think this deck could honestly, you know, make some really big impacts on the meta. It's already showing up in Japan, and it's surprisingly a lot more popular than doing a lot more well than Spectral Duke, in my personal opinion. So I wanted to show off my personal build for Aggravane, because I think this deck is a lot of fun, and I think you can surprise a lot of your friends with a deck that used to be really bad with a deck that's actually pretty decent right now. So let's go ahead and get into it. So our starter is pretty much going to be any Gold Paladin starter you want, but I'm using Night of Early Dawn Coel. I feel like it fits the vibe. Got a little red orange theme going, but also, you know, you gotta, you gotta flex the SP when you can, you know? Got that shiny starter. All right, on to the main deck. Starting off with our main boss unit. Four copies of Night of Fury Aggravane. So what does Aggravane do? Aggravane's skill is when it attacks, you kind of bless one, shove all your rear guards into your soul, and you look at the top amount of cards based on the number of cards you called during the main phase. You look at the top of that number of cards, and from among them, you can call the whole thing, or you can call some and put the rest back into your deck. Regardless of what you do, you shuffle, and that's the rest of that first skill. So if you call five things during the main phase, when it attacks, you look at the top five. If you called two, you look at the top two. If you called seven, you get the idea. The second skill is Act, Soul Blast 12. Uh, until the end of the game, or the fight, uh, your opponent can only call normal units in general. So that includes the Guardian Circle. So that means they can't use their Grade 0 Sentinels. So the crits and the PGs, they can't guard with those. So that can really make it a lot more difficult for your opponent to guard all these extra attacks. Especially when you use the skill again and call another board. So this is a really big finisher for the most part. The Soul Blast 12 used to be impossible to pull off, but now there's a bunch of cards that help you fill up your soul and make it a lot easier to call a bunch of cards, shove it all into your soul with Aggravating Skill and get that Soul Blast 12 kind of rolling. You don't need the Soul Blast 12 in my personal opinion. The deck is still really good on its own, but it still helps to get that extra little bit of threat at the end of the game to close it out, you know? So that's pretty much it for Aggravane's part. Next up, we got the MVP of the deck, Bluish Flame Liberator Percival, also my favorite card in this whole game. So Percival's skill is Vanguard, Circle Only, Continuous during your turn. Your units on the additional markers get uh, 5k. It's not even during your turn, it's just in general, all your additional, all your units on additional markers get 5k, so the Excel markers. Fan or rear, when it's placed, if you have a grade 3 or greater vanguard, count plus 1, discard a card, get another imaginary gift, Excel, search your deck or drop for Aglavale, call it, and if you search your deck, you shuffle, and you can only use this ability once per turn. So, when you call Percival during your main phase, you're going to get, one, an additional Excel marker, so if you pick Excel 2, get to draw a card. So that card you discarded, you're just getting right back. You search your deck for Aglaville, so you're deck thinning and you're getting another call. So that's two calls for Aggravane's skill right there. And then you have Aglaville's skill, which helps you fill up your soul. So you have a search target for Aggraville, you're getting another Excel marker. More Excel markers means you fill your board up faster. You can do this every single turn, every time you see Percival. It's just overall a really, really good card. Love Percival. Next up for grade threes, I'm running three copies of Full Cavalier. I was running four, I decided to drop down to three. So what Full Cavalier does is act, main phase, once per turn, van or rear, soul blast one. You look at the top card of your deck and you call it, and uh, your van gets 5k. So main thing about this card is that you're giving Aggravane an extra 5k power, because when Aggravane swing, when Aggravane swings, it loses its booster because it sucks it to the soul, right? The extra 5k helps so that it's not just 12 when it swings at like another maybe 12k or 13k base vanguard. That's like one 15k trigger to block for two to pass, but at least a 17k can make it one to pass. If you use it twice, 
two different Cavaliers, it's plus 10. So 22k base, it does help a lot with the battle phase for that turn. It obviously helps you fill your board. The one thing is that obviously you're going to lose some soul, so that whole Soul Blast 12 makes it a little bit harder to get to. But the fact that Cavalier just fills your board and helps you make your Vanguard a little bit bigger, very, very helpful card for the Aggravane deck. All right, next up for Grade Threes, I am running two copies of our Aglabel clones, which is Knight of Flying Rings, Edmund. So what Edmund does is Guardian Circle, when it's placed, if your Vanguard's Grade 3 or greater, this gets 10k shield. So it's nice, it's a 10k shield, so you don't have to worry about having too many Grade 3s in your hand. It basically has the same shield as a Grade 1. So then the second skill is when it attacks, you put a rear guard into the soul. This gets 10k, and at the end of the battle that it attacked, you bounce it back into your hand. So Aglovel has the exact same skill, so while this isn't searchable, like how Percival searches out Aglovel, it's still a good call target when you're like doing your battle phase with Aggravane and you need to call something just to fill your board from like the top whatever it is, maybe top three, top five, top seven. This is still a great target because no matter what the other thing you call, um, this will at least suck it up to the soul and get this back into your hand for your defensive turns. So, and obviously it's filling up your soul for Aggravane skill, so it's a really, really good card overall. Um... If there wasn't too much of a space issue, I definitely would want to run this as a 4 of. But because Aglovel does the same thing, uh, if you fill your board too much with too many admins and too many Aglovels, it's hard to figure out what's going to suck up what. Because, you know, they can't suck up each other if they bounce back to your hand at the end of the battle. So the two admin works out just fine. Alright, and lastly for our grade 3s, which is our trigger units, we run 4 copies of Clarity Wing Dragon. So Heal Guardians are great in this deck. So what he Clarity Wing does uh, is if your Vanguard's not a grade 3 yet, you put it, place it on the Guardian Circle during uh, your opponent's battle phase when they attack, and you can either give your Vanguard 10k for the rest of the turn, or you can reduce the crit of your opponent's attack by 2. So it makes it a lot easier to stay alive during the early game because Aggravane's a slow deck. It's a very, very slow deck takes a while to build up to where you're going to push your opponent and win. But Heal Guardians make it way easier to deal with that. Because your opponent can ride to grade 3, you just put multiple Heal Guardians down, buff up your Vanguard, stay at like 1 or 2 damage before you ride to Aggravane, so you can kind of build up your damage slowly. Overall, just Clarity Wing makes this deck function way easier. Uh, the second skill, I almost forgot, is when it's placed uh, from hand. If you don't have any face-up damage, you can put the top card of your deck into your damage zone face-up just to kind of give you kind of boss to work with, so that's helpful too. So that's it for grade 3s. We're now on to grade 2s. Four copies of Liter Liberator of the Flute, Escrad. So Escrad's skill is if you have Aggravane or Escrad as your vanguard and you place it, you look at the top card of your deck and you call it. Uh, then you can kind of boss one to give Escrad 5k if you want. Typically you're not really going to do that just because you don't want to waste your counter blast. You're going to be using them for Percival and Aggravane. Um, but the fact that you can just plop top card, plop another one down, that just counts as two calls for Aggravane skills. So if you do Percival, then a Scrad from hand, you just put down two cards from hand, but now you have four on the board. So now you can call four more things during the battle phase. So definitely run four Scrad. It's an Aggravane deck, so you gotta run four Scrad. Next up for the grade twos, we're running our Percivals, so we should run... Our Aglavales. So Aglavales skill is first skill is Vanguard Circle. When it's when you ride it, you kind of blast one. Look at the top three cards of your deck, call one, and you put the rest to the bottom of your deck. You don't shuffle. And then the second skill is like Edmund's skill. It's when it attacks, you put another unit into your soul. This gets 10k, and at the end of the battle, you bounce it. So we have plenty of soul filling cards because we're running four Aglavale. You're pretty much gonna soul charge or soul. Yeah, I guess soul charge. Uh, the Percival that you use to call out Aglovale, because, you know, why would you need a grade 3 vanilla on your board? But, yeah, Aglovale's a great card. It's a great ride target. Um, so if you ride either Aglovale or Scrad, something's going to happen, which is great for this deck. You don't have to worry about your turn 2 just kind of being vanilla. So Aglovale's a great card, too. That's it for a grade 2. So we're only running 8 grade 2s, so no matter what grade 2 you ride... 
um, you're good to go. Um, if you're worried about the consistency of running eight grade twos, honestly, it works out just fine. I wouldn't worry about it. So next up is our grade ones. I am running three copies of Fast Chase Liberator Cephas, which is a new card that came out in uh, V Crime Collection Volume 2, along with Clarity Wing. So what Josephus does is if another unit rides on top of this, you may look at the top card of your, or you look at the top card of your deck and you may call it. So if if it's something that's not a trigger, you pretty much are always gonna call it. If it is a trigger, you can put it back on the top of your deck. It's pretty dope. So the second skill is when it's placed onto the rearguard circle from your deck, you can do a soul blast to draw, a soul blast to counter charge, or you can do both. You can soul blast two to draw and counter charge. So a lot of options there when you call it from the deck. Your main ways of calling this are either going to be a scrad, full cavalier, but the main biggest way you're probably going to get it off is through aggravating skill, just top seven. Oh, look, a host of us call it, you know, easy. So if... The way I see it, when you're playing Aggravain during your battle phase and you're like, I am nowhere near my Soul Blast 12, you may as well just Soul Blast the 2, counter charge and draw, just to maximize the amount of like usage you can do for the deck. If you're playing Excel 1, you're probably going to want to do both anyways, just because you're losing out on your draw from not using Excel 2. Um, Host of it's just a great card, and it's also a great ride target. The other thing too is since you're running only a Scrad, and Aglavale as your ride targets for grade two. When you ride on top of it, you want to use Josephus skill second. Um, because with Aglavale, if you do Josephus and then you see a trigger, like it's like say it's a heal trigger, and you're like, oh, I don't want to call that, then now you have to use Aglavale's skill, look at top three, call something, and then the rest go to bottom, you lost the heal trigger anyways. So same with the scrad. When you ride it, look at top card, it's a heal, but with the scrad skill, you'd have to call it anyways. So Better, I would say, is to use the Grade twos skill first, since they happened at the same time, and then Josephus' skill, if maybe the next card on top is a trigger, whoop, that's not a trigger, is a trigger, <laughs> you can leave it on top, and that way you can set yourself up for that battle phase. And then, obviously, if it's not a trigger, just call it. So that's my little uh, little bit of advice there for how you should be using Josephus on that Grade two ride. Next up for Grade ones, four copies of this thing. Kun Kundel Dug I'm not even gonna try and pronounce that. C Knight of Sound Health C Kanadang Kanadangius. So this is also like a scrad an Aggravain specific card. So when it boosts, if your Vanguard is Aggravain, you do the effects based on the number of things you call during the turn. So if you call two or more, the boosted unit gets 3k. If you call four or more, it gets an additional 5k. So when you get to the four or more it's a total of 8k. So that you're, you're basically creating a 16k booster, which is nice. But the more important thing is that, if I just move the other three out of the way, when you're boosting Aggravain, um, and you boost before you do Aggravain's skill, you can say that you're using the skill of the grade one first. You add the 8k to the boosted unit, which is Aggravain, and then afterwards you use Aggravain's skill, suck it to the soul, and Aggravain still keeps the 8k from the skill, but it loses the 8k from the boost. So that's the only thing. But a 20k Vanguard attack is still really helpful on its own, just because Aggravain does lose its booster. And if you called out full Cavalier earlier, you know, that's 25. So at least this card does help make your Aggravain attack bigger. But it's still really good as a booster on any other circle, any of your other back row rearguard circles. So this card, I would think you definitely want to run four of it, especially if you're going to look at your top four or five and you have to call a trigger among one of them just to maximize the number of attacks. You can call a trigger in front of this, and that's still 21 by itself. So it's de makes decent numbers, Aggravain specific. I think the card kind of speaks for itself. So then next up for grade ones, four copies of Gorbaduck. Pretty much a staple for most V Premium decks. Everyone's going to be running like four copies of these things. Uh, the first skill is, if you call two or more things, it gets 5k. Van or Rear, it's pretty simple, almost always goes off. And the second skill is, Van or Rear, when it's placed from hand, you look at the top five cards of your deck, look for a grade three, add it to your hand. Uh, if you do add a card, you discard a card, and then you shuffle. So, you do want to be on Aggravain. You really don't want to ride anything else. If you have to ride Percival, I guess that's okay, but you want to ride Aggravain as your first ride. 
So Gorber deck, definitely run for this just so you can help you search out your Aggravain. Uh, helps you search out Heal Guardians if you want to uh, make it easier to defend during your Grade 2 turn. That way you don't have too, many da too much damage when you're going into your Aggravain for the first time. So these are all things to consider with Gorbaduck. Searches out Percival. That's another good reason to run it. So a lot of the great things in this deck are really vital to the main phase, battle phase thing. So Gorbaduck is almost always helpful for this deck. And last but not least for our last grade one, it's a regular grade one PG. So um, I'm not running all uh, trigger sentinels, clearly. Um, so we're running the one just for space issues. Um, so has the first skill of when it's placed in the guard circle, you, you know, PG, discard a card, block an attack. Second skill is when you write it, you can draw a card and then discard a card from your hand so then that this works really well as well with um, Quick Shield. So if you're going second, you can ride it if it's the only grade one in your hand. And then you can draw a card, discard your Quick Shield. So helping you kind of filter through your deck, find your combo pieces. But because I'm only running three grade zero Sentinels, um, we're just running the one grade one PG instead. So that's it for our normal units. Now we're going to go into our trigger units. So because I'm running the one grade one PG, I'm running three draw sentinels, halo shield mark. The reason I toned down my draw PGs to three is because this deck goes so fast. And especially if you're going to be drawing cards from draw triggers, it leads you into deck thing really quickly in terms, at least in my play testing, I've noticed that. Um, you can run it at four if you feel like I'm wrong, but my personal experience, I do like it at three. So I just played at three. Um, but the other reason is because I really want to be aggressive with my front triggers. So let's go ahead and just show those off as the last nine cards of the deck. I'm running nine fronts. And because I'm running nine, might as well use different artworks. So I really want to make this deck as aggressive as possible. So whenever I'm doing my twin drive on the Aggravain turn and I call my whole board, if I at least see one front, I know that turn is going to be very productive to like than out my opponent's hand. Versus if there's the difference between seeing a front and another draw trigger, I'd rather, rather see a front. But because draw PGs are so helpful, I still wanna keep them at three, at least run, running them in general. So this trigger lineup has been working for me. I personally like it this way, but this is meant to be like a super front, aggressive, unga bunga, just boom, 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 call units, call a board, front trigger, aggro kind of deck. Um, so I don't want to say that this deck is front trigger reliant, even though it does come off that way, but because we still have pretty big beaters such as Edmund and Aglavale, we still have a way to like, you know, mitigate the fact that if we don't get a trigger, we can still swing for pretty big beat stick numbers in general. So, but if you do get a front, those get way bigger. So it's still nice to run the fronts. So that's pretty much it for the deck profile. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with this deck. That's just one of the main things I want to say. And I feel like it's really funny when you playing against someone and they don't expect you to be running Aggravain. They just see you ride Aggravain and they're like, ah, a joke. Until they finally understand, oh, this deck's good. <laughs> it's, it's also just a really fun deck too. So if you're at home and your Aggravain is just sitting somewhere like at the bottom of where you keep your cards or maybe it's in your trash. Go go dig up Aggravain out of your trash and make a deck, it's fun. Uh, that's pretty much it for the deck profile. I'm definitely gonna be showing some games with this soon in the near future, so be on the lookout for that. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them in the comment section below. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.